Welcome to Two Truths and AI. Today, we're going to be in r slash petty revenge. Two of the three following posts were written by real Redditors. I don't know how true the stories actually are. That being said, the other one was written by an artificial intelligence, at least in part, and edited by myself. And all three stories have been obscured as much as I can make them. Can you guess which ones are real and which one is fake? First story, refuse my refund. See you in court. This is my first ever petty revenge, so hopefully it's petty enough to be here. This story is fresh off the presses. Characters, wife, my wife, Stacy, her friend, name changed, scum in, scummy hotel, uh, pleasant place, nice hotel, uh, Soldman Gax, uh, my annoying credit card issuer. Backstory. In June 2021, my wife and Stacy took a girl's trip to a certain beach town in the southern part of the USA. They were trying to keep costs low, so they rented a car instead of flying and booked a four-night stay at Scum Inn on Booking.com, which required our payment method. Once they got there, in order to check in, they had to sign multiple documents, uh, provide their license plate, provide their driver's license, as well as pay a $100 damage deposit, and provide our credit card info again. I guess Booking doesn't send over the credit card info for this property. They did all that and went to their room. Upon entering, they did not like the condition of the room. Hair all over the blankets, which means it hadn't been cleaned. Uh, rust and mold on all the fixtures and crayon on the walls, which means it hadn't been cleaned in a very, very, very long time. And it was really bad. Uh, the original price of the stay was $378.60, but per the hotel's cancellation policy, we had to pay the first night's stay due to canceling within two days, so our refund amount should have been $283.95. They canceled their stay with Booking.com and went to the front desk to confirm cancellation. The guy at the front desk stated that Booking would issue them their refund, but we paid on the property, then shooed them out and locked the door since the office is closed which means he knew that everything was going to be horrible and was planning on trying to steal their money. At this point, it's well past 9 p.m., and wife and Stacy are in an unfamiliar town that they just drove 12 hours to get to with no place to sleep. I was able to book them last minute at Pleasant Place at 9.25 p.m., which they stayed at for the remainder of their stay. It was over $200 more expensive, um, but worth it. All in all, uh, I had spent $863.85 in hotel accommodations. Just needed the refund for the previous hotel. Now for the revenge. Uh, even though the transactions were still pending on my card, I went ahead and disputed them anyway. They, you should have done an absolute chargeback. I provided Soldman Gax. Uh, with original or with the original email and picture I took of the cancellation screen, as well as the cancellation policy that the hotel provides on booking. <clears throat> Around three months later, I get a notification that the dispute was not resolved in my favor because I didn't have any proof. That's odd. I know I submitted it. Okay, I'll do it again. This time, after I submitted my evidence, I, ca I called them to confirm they received it, which they did. Another three months later, they notified me the dispute was not resolved in my favor, but this, this time because Scum Inn had, quote, ample evidence that we did, in fact, stay there, end quote. Uh, today, it's game, or okay, it's game time now. I filed a third dispute, submitted even more evidence, and called them and explained the situation. That Scum Inn is providing documentation that we willingly provided prior to cancellation, and they need to request more documentation before issuing a judgment. Unfortunately, this didn't happen because the bank is lazy, uh, and they still ruled this third dispute in the inn's favor due to, uh, due to them providing the same evidence a second time. I tried... Uh, one more time to submit another dispute with all the evidence I could gather and called the bank multiple times to ensure that they were following through. In the end, they still refused to uh, rule in my favor. Next, I tried booking to see if they can assist with the refund. They told me that since the cancellation policy on their web website shows I was allowed a refund, they would handle getting it to me and would go after the hotel themselves. Spoiler alert, that doesn't happen. Basically, after a bunch of uh, calls back and forth, they, uh, they say that there's nothing they can do. Uh, however, the only shred of good news is that I learned that hotels on their site are responsible for listing their cancellation policies, so whatever a hotel lists is binding at the time of booking. 
Armed with my petty AF attitude and knowledge booking gave me, I set out to file a small claim suit. Readers, don't be fooled. Small claims are not e as easy as they claim to be. Certain states bury information or require so much that you have uh, to dedicate time just to gather it all. Basically, the, the bar associations of that state make it very difficult for you to do anything without a lawyer. Uh, nonetheless, I managed to scrounge up all the documents and filed my suit in May 2022. It was officially go time. I gathered everything, screenshots of the inn's policy, all photos that wife and Stacy took I could use as evidence, video re or videos, receipts, credit card statements, screenshots of texts and emails. I was even able to call the other hotel, Pleasant Place, and get a copy of my invoice from them. Uh, we had been, or it had been well over a year at this point. All that alone totaled 28 megabytes of data, which I know isn't a lot, but remember, it was just PDFs and screenshots, the largest file being a screenshot that was 2.5 megabytes. Uh, most files were less than 900K. Being that I live uh, 10 to 12 hours away from the court based on traffic, I was able to upload all my evidence to the court case file, and they agreed to swear me in via phone. Ah, uh, the beauties of modern technology. About an hour ago, from the time I'm typing this, the court called me. I was sworn in and then explained everything. The cancellation, the conditions, and treatment at Scum Inn. The credit card disputes and how I was requesting a full ref or how I wasn't requesting a full refund, just the portion we are owed. We had to pay the cancellation fee after all. Um, sounds like OP is being very reasonable at this point. It felt like a weight was finally lifted off my shoulders. Someone is finally listening to me uh, who can actually do something. Then it came time for Scum in to tell their side. They claimed they had no documentation we actually checked out because they don't have the paperwork, so they can't prove anything other than what's on paper. Not a good idea. That was literally all they had to say. How did Soldman Gax not, uh, just, uh, not just side eye that? Uh, the judge then asked both of us a series of questions, including how much the stay per night was, who was the person working the front desk, do I have any other evidence uh, to enter besides what I've already submitted, etc. After everything was said and done, the judge sided with us during the process. The guy representing Scum Inn decided it would be smart to try and tell the judge that since the credit card company already denied the dispute, um, uh, or they had already denied the, the dispute, to which the judge replied, the credit card company isn't the court. I am. I don't care what the credit card company said. It's clear they did not stay at your hotel. Nice one, scum in. Add fuel to the flames. Because this is a small claim suit, there are extra fees that have to be paid by the defendant, including the fee to serve court documents and the fee to file the petition to sue. Because I won, I'm owed all that plus or all that back plus post judgment interest. So now I'm just waiting for Scum in to pay me two hundred and eighty three dollars and ninety five cents plus one hundred and twenty nine dollars in court fees plus seven percent or seven and a half percent post judgment interest for a grand total of four hundred and thirteen dollars and seven cents. They likely won't pay, but I'll, uh, and I'll have to file a judgment. Foreclose, do it. Foreclose on the hotel. Then you'll own a hotel. Um, <clears throat> but at least that gives me more petty revenge to add to the story. Hopefully you enjoyed the read. I know it's not as good as others, but I've been waiting for the day I could finally post this. Uh, story number two. You won't believe what this boy did when his neighbor refused to pay for dog poop cleanup. All right, buckle up, folks. I've got a petty revenge story that's going to make you laugh and cringe at the same time. So there was this kid in my neighborhood, let's call him Timmy, who was trying to make some extra cash by offering to clean up dog poop in people's yards. Look, props to Timmy. It's not good work. It's hard work. But somebody's got to get it done. Now, I don't know why anyone would pay for this service, but apparently Timmy had a few takers, including my neighbor, Mr. Jenkins. So Timmy dutifully goes over to Jenkins' house every week, cleans up all the poop in his yard, and waits for his payment. But here's the kicker. Jenkins never pays him. Not a single dime. He just keeps telling Timmy he'll get the money next time or that he doesn't have any cash on him right now or some other BS excuse. This goes on for weeks, and Timmy's getting pretty fed up. Finally, one day, Timmy snaps. He goes over to Mr. Jenkins' yard, and uh, instead of cleaning up the poop like he usually does, he just starts adding to it. He brings over bags and bags of dog poop from other yards in the neighborhood and just dumps it all over Jenkins' lawn. He even gets some of his friends to help him out, and they all have a grand old time filling up the entire yard with poop. This might 
be closer to nuclear revenge than petty revenge. <clears throat> now, Mr. Jenkins is absolutely livid when he sees what's happened to his yard. He storms over to Timmy's house, demanding to know what the hell is going on. Timmy just calmly tells him that he's sick of not getting paid and that this is what happens when you mess with him. Jenkins uh, threatened to call the cops, but Timmy just laughs in his face and tells him to go ahead. Of course, the cops don't really care about a bunch of dog poop on someone's lawn, so Jenkins uh, is left to deal with it himself. He spends days trying to clean it up, but he can never get rid of it all. And the best part? Timmy goes over to his house every day and just watches him struggle. He sits on the front porch with a big grin on his face, knowing that he got the ultimate revenge on this stingy neighbor. Don't be a stingy neighbor, ladies and gentlemen. If you make an agreement, stick to your agreement. And that, my friends, is how you deal with someone who doesn't pay you for your hard work. Uh, Timmy may have been a little petty, but hey, sometimes you got to fight fire with fire. Or in this case, poop. And finally, spoiled brat gets bit on the butt. As I was working for a small logging business, the owner's son was in charge of everything. He was a very careless kid with no restraint. He knew his dad and mom would bail him out or fix uh, whatever he damaged. I drove a new car to work one day because I was going to my sister's after work. It was the opposite way from our commute. A flatbed truck was coming to our site to pick up a piece of equipment, but uh, couldn't find the site. Boss Jr. wanted to use my car to chase down the truck. I told him no. He had a very bad habit of wrecking all the vehicles. So on Monday, I showed up uh, for work, but was fired on the spot for leaving early Friday. I did not leave early, but this was his story. Not a good idea. So the revenge came a few years later. I was at a bar one night, live music, dancing, packed place. My sister was the bartender. She approached my table and asked if I knew this guy over by the wall. He had no ID. It was Boss Jr. My guess is Boss Jr. sent uh, the bartender over to say, hey, this guy knows me. Uh, he'll vouch that I'm over 21. He had a date with him and had driven 40 miles to come to this particular bar. I told my sister I did not know him and could not vouch for him in any way. She kicked him out with his girlfriend. Revenge is sweet. And he got severely embarrassed, I'm sure, as he well deserved. Which one do you think is the fake one? Which two do you think are real? Let me know in the comments, or you can find the answer at thearthurnicks.locals.com. That's also where I post other exclusive content that isn't anywhere else on the internet.